We are here in beautiful Santa Cruz, California. The fog just rolling in off the ocean. Here today in our first semifinals matchup, Austin Doublewide taking on Johnny Bravo from Boulder and Denver. A semifinals matchup, a matchup that is going to be seen in the new South Central Regionals Finals. Double wide so far in this tournament, they are four and one with a single loss to Rhino that we just saw. And Double game point loss. And Johnny Bravo, five and one. In that other pool, they had a loss that we saw here on this field taking on Sakai yesterday. Both teams are hungry to get to that finals. I know that Bravo is really looking to prove themselves as a hot team this year, really defending their second place ranking in the USA Ultimate rankings. And here to show that they can take on the now perennial semifinalist double wide. Looks like double wide is starting on defense. And Jackson, what do you think we're going to be seeing this game? Double wide loves the deep shot. Going to see a lot of deep throws from Kurt Gibson, Tim Garrett, Cole Sullivan, David Melicone, Jeff Loscorn, all five of those guys taking a lot of deep shots. We did see Bravo take on Sockeye yesterday. Sockeye ended up winning that game. Score of 13-11, I believe. Starters on offense for Bravo. We have Parker Krug, Owen Westbrook, Jimmy Mickle, Clark Bishop, Jesse Ream, Evan Padgett, and Jackson Clore. I believe you met Josh Ackley down there. Right. Hard to get him confused with the disc, with the gloves. And Josh Ackley wasting no time to go deep to Jimmy Mickle. And Jimmy Mickle <laughs> reels it in. Pancake. And that was easy. Two throws. Jimmy Mickles striding it out. Jake Anderson closing. Can't quite close the gap. Well, a hot start for the next-gen all-star, James Mickle. Now we get a look at Bravo's starting defensive line. Gregerson, Salvia, Burrell, Morrissey, Craig Forshey, David Belsheim, looks like Josh Anderson, Johnny Bravo's defensive line without Captain Jack McShane. On a turn, McShane is the one who is usually controlling the disc. He's been having ankle problems. We'll see how the double, excuse me, how the Bravo defensive line is going to adjust from that. Will Driscoll out in the lane first. Gibson over to Sullivan. Sullivan rips the backhand to Thomas. Puts it only to where Thomas can catch it. Thomas outside the end zone. Scoobers to Beershank. Beershank cannot make the grab turnover. Bravo looking to break. Salvia with it. Swings over to Ryan Farrell. It's Tim Morrissey. Back to Farrell. Over to Gregerson, marked by Sullivan. Centers to Farrell. Kurt Gibson with the hack, foul called. No contest from Gibson.
David Belsheim with it now, marked by Beershank. Gregerson with the disc. Not seeing much downfield. Excuse me, that's Jeff Kohe on the line, not Josh Anderson. Gregerson rips the flick. Blady throw, Belsheim stumbles. Beershank jumps over him. Belsheim to Pharrell. Ryan Pharrell just outside the end zone. I believe they called a foul on Kevin Richardson. Play stops on the field. Not really much of a red zone offense here, just four players scattered in the end zone. Two dumps behind Pharrell, it's Gregerson and Borshi. No, that's Jeff Kohe. No, you're right, Forshee. Forshee. Justin Salvia toes the line. Pharrell breaks around Richardson's mark, and Bravo gets the first break of the game, the upwind break. And going back to the turn, it's just a very, very interesting choice of throw from Kieran Thomas. The scuba around, which is on the backhand side, he could have thrown something flat, floated it <coughs> right past Beershank into the end zone, but the scuba just died. Difficult play to make. And Johnny Bravo though, perfect working the disc back up field. Both of these teams coming off double double game point games. Double wide, of course, lost to Rhino. Dylan Freechild making a spectacular play. And then Bravo beating Machine to take the second seed in the A pool. Well, actually, Bravo had a game against um, Boost Mobile from California after their win against Machine. Machine, of course, the win against Machine was to clinch second place. Double wide offense. Cole Sullivan, Kurt Gibson, Lostcorn, Richardson, Driscoll, Thomas, and Beershank. Center to Sullivan. Continues to Driscoll. Thomas on the sideline. And Thomas, backhand huck down the sideline, and Driscoll, big in the air, goes up and cleans it up one-handed. Driscoll sat out that Rhino game, saving his legs, said his heel was bothering him a little, no sense in risking injury. It is, it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch Will Driscoll on this double wide team. Got a, had the pleasure of watching him all summer on the next gen tour. The impressive thing about Driscoll is he's only been playing Frisbee for three years. It's not very common to see a player of his size with the throws that he has. Able to throw scoobers, forehand hucks, of course, the backhand hucks. Dominant in the air. Skying numerous elite players on the next gen tour. O line for Bravo, Paget, Ackley, Krug, Mickel, Clore, Ream, and Westbrook. Westbrook out in the lane, gets the disc. They're going deep again to Jimmy Mickle, and he catches it. Pressure D from Jake Anderson. 
Mikkel comes down hard, holding his ankle. Oof. Doesn't look like he can really put too much pressure on that. Anderson lands on his leg after Mikkel had caught it. He stumbles off. That could be a huge blow for Johnny Bravo here in the game. Mikkel caught the first point of the game on a huck and there catches it deep on Anderson. Second time he's taken him deep and won. Ryan Farrell subs in for him. You hate to see a big player like that have to take an injury gingerly walking off the field. Coming in on zero with Pharrell with the disc. Pharrell puts a hammer to Ream. Bravo scores, pushes their lead to two. Bravo not scared to take shots on this large double wide team. Plenty of deep players over six foot two. Bravo at three to one. Only up one break so far. O-line for double wide, Driscoll, Sullivan, Loscorn, Kurt Gibson, Beershank, Richardson, and Thomas. Mickle's still trying to work out that injury. Hasn't taken his cleats off yet. Hopeful that he can get back in. Still limping. Pull coming from Jake Duzak. Spent his college years at Cal Poly, you know, Cal Poly Slow. Gibson picked up, marked by Forshe, finds Thomas. The around throw, it hangs up, but Will Driscoll's just really tall. And a huge D from number 12, Tim Morrissey, Junior Worlds player. Also teammates with Jimmy Mickle and Jackson Clore. Bravo earning the disc for the first time this game. Instead of just having it handed to them by double wide. Now Juzak with the disc. An unfortunate drop. Double wide gets the disc right back. Sullivan up to Gibson. Sullivan goes up line. And he hammers over the top, just outside the reach of Kieran Thomas. He got two hands on it, but he just couldn't close his fingers around it. Let's see, he gets up, couldn't quite reel it in. Now Belsheim walks it to the line, marked by Thomas. Seventy yards to go for Bravo. Second break, and a huge D from Kevin Richardson. He macked it backwards. Kind of an odd swat at that. Now Loscorn with it over to Gibson. Gibson to Loscorn. Loscorn to the vocal Cole Sullivan. Up to Driscoll, Driscoll marked by Juzak. 
Cole Sullivan bids and calls foul. Jacoki. Uncontested foul. Stays at Sullivan. And Thomas again. Three turns turn. already in this game for Thomas. Deep shot, Jake Juzak, but it gets to Belsheim. Dumps it to Kohi. Some talk about a foul or a contact call. Initially, Belsheim called foul and then said contact because he's called foul. Play stops. Interesting, before that deep throw went off, you could hear the Bravo sidelines just screaming at the players of the field, who is going deep? And Belsheim dumps to Kohi. He's Kohi's fired up. Belsheim scores a goal. Bravo takes the lead 4-1 on double wide. Double wide went down early in their last game against Rhino. Was able to push it to double game point. Yeah, certainly not a team you want to count out of the game at any point. Bravo continues playing well, though. They would love to see this lead be extended. As I was saying before, the deep shot went up. You could hear the sidelines screaming for someone to go deep. Bravo's defense really relies on that deep game to eat up yards, to get going. When it opens up, they are playing well. Austin Gregerson with the pull. Big outside in. Sullivan fields it. Throws up field to Kurt Gibson. Gibson over to Cole, Cole Sullivan. Richardson with it. Richardson to Loscorn. Loscorn puts it to Thomas. And that time, Thomas, not a drop catches and converts the goal. Double wide keeps it close. They only trail 4-2. I really like to see that double wide still is putting the ball to Kieran Thomas. He's been having a slow start, a few unforced turns but I think it really means a lot for a player to get back under their feet if their team is showing confidence in them. As we said, Karen Thomas, a great cutter, transfer from Chain. Played his Texas days at University of Texas. The Texas ultimate Frisbee friends. Tough. D-line for double wide, Poindexter, Garrett, Orloff, Anderson, Chris Gibson, Walsh, Jared Wolf. 
Garrett with the backhand pull. Ackley with it in the middle. Ackley over to Hurst. Excuse me, Joe Durst. Krug to Clore, hammer right through that zone. Westbrook with it now. Ream catches and scores his second goal of the game. Bravo takes the lead, 5-2. Good job by Jesse Ream to go up strong. Orloff was coming on his back, but Ream, the much taller player, had position. By going up for it, he really takes out any play that Orloff could have made. Also on that offensive point, Jimmy Mickle was back on the line. He didn't do much on the field, but it is good to see that that injury is not bothering him. Looks like he's still limping just a little bit. Not limping enough to hold him out of the game though. Bravo looks like they're taking a timeout. However, they're not just really talking out the matchups, what they want on defense, the strategy. D-line for them, Juzak, Gregerson, Orshi, Morrissey, Salvia, Paget, And I believe that's Captain Ryan Farrell. You can't quite see the numbers though. Uh, it's David Belsheim. Uh, yes. Gregerson been taking care of the pulling so far for Bravo. Let's his team set up. Now Sullivan with it in the middle, unmarked. Sullivan rips a backhand to Lostcorn. Little low rides the wind. Lostcorn coming from that front of the stack all the way deep. Bravo has a chance to go 70 yards to get their third break in the first half. Paget with the disc. All the way around to Gregerson. Upfield to Salvia. Salvia looking for Forshi. Lost Corn couldn't track down the O point, but gets a D. Horshi trying to read it, gives up inside position, and Lostcorn goes all out. Now Lostcorn with it. Beershank. Beershank looking for a dump, finds Lostcorn. Lostcorn to Beershank. Beershank back to Lostcorn. Gibson on the sideline, marked by Morrissey. Lostcorn. Now Driscoll with it. High release backhand, can't throw it to the space. Bravo's disc. Looks like we have a foul call, or no, an injury. Josh Ackley subs in for Evan Paget. Now Juzak with it in the middle, marked by Driscoll. Gibson comes out and Jared Wolf goes in. Gibson with a knee brace. They probably don't want to push him too much on defense. Certainly a valuable player to have on the offensive side of the disc. Juzak to Salvia on the sidelines. Fouled by Kieran Thomas. Looks like there's a little discussion. Comes in on zero, no contest. Salvia to Ackley. Ackley, uh, Ackley inside throw to Juzak. 
10 yards outside the end zone. Lefty to Ackley, to Salvia. Salvia scores his second goal of the game. And Bravo gets their third break. They take the lead 6-2 on double wide. And you see the kind of impact bringing in a player like Josh Ackley has on the game. He absolutely broke open that play with an inside out flick and then finishes it off running to reset the disc and throw it in for the goal. And after three breaks, Double Wide is gonna take a timeout and regroup. We'll be taking a timeout ourselves. Be sure to come back in just a minute. And we are back here in Santa Cruz, the semifinal matchup of Austin Double Wide and Johnny Bravo from Boulder. So far, Johnny Bravo has been getting the better of double wide mistakes. Of course, double wide in the last game that we were watching went down at half eight to four, but they were able to come back and force it, force the game to universe. Double wide on offense, brings in first year player for double wide, but certainly a veteran in the game, Tim Garrett. Also some of their defensive players with Jacob Anderson. Lost scorn to Garrett. Garrett marked by Kohe. Now Jared Wolf to Anderson. Anderson finds Garrett. Garrett with the laser to Thomas. Thomas pushing it deep to Jared Wolf. Jared Wolf goes up and gets it over number 32, Henry Conker. Kieran Thomas gets a second assist, throwing that backhand earlier to Will Driscoll. That time finding Jared Wolf in the end zone. During that timeout, we were able to listen in on Double Wide's huddle. Nothing left. We got nothing else to do if we lose this game. So let's step it up. There's nothing else. Nothing else to do. Let's fucking go. Talking about not thinking about anything else but this game. If they lose this game, they have no chance at winning the Labor Day Club Championship. In these elimination games, you always expect to see the teams put everything that they have into the game. I'm putting it on your better. You'll see players like Jimmy Mickle get injured, but go back on the offensive line. There's Tim Garrett with a pull for double wide. Burrell catches that pull that looked like it was drifting out of bounds. Now Mickle back in. Burrell with it, marked by Garrett, dumps to Ackley. Ackley marked by Rory Olaf. Jimmy Mickle has it. Jimmy Mickle calling foul, Jake Anderson doesn't think so. Some discussion looks like there's going to be a contest. How about now? 
Mickle across to Krug. Krug inside break. Calling the foul on Kevin Richardson. Richardson doesn't seem to be contesting. The disc is staying at Parker Krug. Lex to throw that inside out backhand. Now Jackson Clore with it. Over to Mickle. Low throw from Mickle. Looking for Ream. Now Garrett with it. Stall gets high. He's forced to put it deep to Richardson. Richardson goes up. Knee spike gets it over Krug. And double wide gets a break back. Great pressure all around the field. Really tightening the screws and the Bravo dumps. And it works for them as they're able to force a miss throw, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then with a short field, easily punch it in. Now down two breaks. Down two breaks. On that throw from Jimmy Mickle, it was a low backhand. He pivoted out, tried to plant on that injured right heel that he rolled earlier in the game. You wonder if it's not as stable and his balance was thrown off ever so slightly causing that throw to come out a little lower than he anticipated. Mikkel staying in the game, however, doesn't seem to be bothering him too much. D-line for double wide, Garrett, Walsh, Barons, Chris Gibson, Anderson, Jared Wolf and Rory Orloff. Ackley with it. Goes to Mickle. Pick called. Throw will stay with Joe Durst. Durst marked by Chris Gibson. Throws to Ackley. Foul called on the mark. We're having some trouble with our above field camera. In the last point, you may have noticed that we were only filming from the ground level. Our crew is working on that right now. We are trying to get you the best angles that we can. Threll with it, finds Mickle on the sidelines. Just past midfield, marked by Jake Anderson. Mickle to Westbrook, swings it over to Durst. In the middle now with Ackley. Ackley to Mickle to Westbrook. Up the line to Mickle. Mickle to Westbrook. Pick called down the field. Good job from the double wide defense containing those deep looks. It has been hurting them early in this game. And now Bravo really having, really being forced to throw a lot of passes. Mickle gets it off to Ackley on the sideline. Ackley to Mickle up line. Mickle throws it up the line. Ryan Farrell spikes it with authority. Farrell is fired up and so is Bravo. They take the lead 7-4 on double wide. Bravo able to stop the momentum building break from double wide. I'm not sure if it's intentional, but Farrell seemed to look right at Tim Garrett who was marking him that point when he spiked it. Sometimes you get those heated battles in the middle of a point. And that can really translate 
late in the game. Maybe more matchups with Pharrell and Garrett. We might see. We might see Garrett really try to turn it on, as that can fire up a player on the other side, as well as your own team. Another big player from Bravo not playing in this game, Ethan Pollock, out of Cornell University, his second year on the team. 6-6, defender, not cleated up. Not sure what the injury is. It'd be nice to have him to hang with all the double wide tall receivers. Now Austin Gregerson to pull. Gregerson sticking with that Backhand outside in. The drift just out of bounds. We now have that overhead shot for you. Hopefully it's a little more pleasurable viewing. Now Gibson marked by Tim Morrissey. Takes it at the brick. Gibson gets yards from Sullivan. Gregerson poaching in the lane, giving up a 10 yard gainer. Back to Gibson in the middle. Again getting yards on that poach. Sullivan all the way across the field to Lostcorn. Marked by Salvia. Almost a mismatch there. Lostcorn guarded by Salvia. Salvia giving up a few inches to Lostcorn. Gibson with the Oyo outside in, inside out throw to Sullivan. Sullivan to Gibson, just past midfield on the near side. Thomas with his third drop of the game. Evan Padgett walks over. Beershank marks him over to Salvia. Gregerson. Gregerson to Juzak. Salvia oh. inside throw little miscommunication there between Salvia and Gregerson don't know if he needed to throw that I don't know if it was that late in the stall just trying to get the disc moving off the sideline and it doesn't work out for Bravo and the throw choice a hot throw coming out fast good for a dump if you have contact with the person you're throwing to. But as that swings past everyone, Bravo loses a bit of yards. Gibson right outside the goal line. Marked by Morrissey, inside throw to Thomas, to Will I Am Driscoll. Cuts Bravo's lead to two. Bravo with a chance to break that point. And a break would have taken them to half. Half at 8-4 is a lot better than half at, or than 7-5 and not having half. On those inside out hot forehands, you really have to be accurate with them, get them right in the numbers. Not a lot of time for, I believe it was intended for Gregerson. Yeah. Not a lot of time for Gregerson to make the adjustment if the throw is coming that fast, if it's not in his chest, it's basically not going to anyone. Bravo, though, at a downwind point on offense, can take it half here if they're able to work it down. O-line for Bravo. Looking at Krug, Ackley, Mickle, Burrell, Clore, Ream, and Westbrook. Got to think Bravo's going to be looking to go deep right away, either to Ream or Mickle. Oftentimes, gets centered to Ackley, then Mickle streaks deep. Mickle with a shoestring grab. 
dumps back to Ackley. Ackley inside throw. One-handed grab from Clore. We have an injury back with Chris Gibson as his defensive bid attempt resulted in an injury. Now Kevin Richardson subbing in for him. Of course, play goes back to when the injury occurred. So it will remain with Clore. Be marked by Richardson coming in on zero. Ream out in the lane. Marked by Walsh. Clore elects the dump. Oh. Huge layout grab on defense by Tim Garrett. Then the blade over Westbrook's head. Looks like there's some sort of call. Interesting, Pharrell and Garrett talking something out. Big there grab. It. Big grab. It's like a contested stall. We'll be coming in on stall eight. Hammer over the top to Richardson. Subs in on that point. Goes up and snags the goal. Double wide. Gets a break, now only trails by one. Huge momentum swing. Tim Garrett getting that nasty layout D and then hammers over the top to Richardson. Tim, Sal go ahead. I was just gonna say, Tim Garrett is such a big time defender and playmaker. He played on Sockeye for a number of years after playing from Florida, graduating from Florida, and he was a big player on that defense and as I had mentioned earlier he was guarding Pharrell and maybe he had a little bit extra fire to get that D he really got up to lay out past Pharrell and then some contentious words on the stall covered a lot of ground on that bit attempt you can see it just explodes through the disc you never want to fire up a playmaker like that. Never want to fire up team. a Callahan Award winner. <laughs> Just explodes through the disc. Great form, really. Lands on his chest, pops right up. Garrett with the pull. High and floaty. Pharrell takes it down, centers to Ackley. Jimmy Mickle out in the lane. Ackley dumps to Krug. Again, we see Garrett guarding Ryan Farrell. Farrell moves it up to Mickle. Bravo really struggling to get that deep game working for them as it was earlier in the game. Krug back to Mickle. Jared Wolf. Wolf. Calling foul. Bringing on zero. Mikkel seeing the space. Parker Krug rips it to Ackley. Rory Orloff swings and misses. Ackley with it just outside the end zone. Goes to Jimmy Mikkel. And Johnny Bravo takes half, 8-6 on double wide. Keeps their confidence high, keeps their lead at two. Goes back, I think this goes back to the defensive possession that Johnny Bravo had at 7-5, 7-4, 7-4. 7-4, and Salvia electing to <laughs> rifle that flick just past Gregerson after Gregerson switched his feet and so double wide is able to score and they're also able to get a break bravo still takes the half but the momentum was really cut down that's something that they're going to need to clean up they're going to need to find their legs under them late in the game and we will see how double wide is able to respond in the second half make the comeback we've seen a comeback in second half play before so be sure to tune back in after our halftime break here on the Next Gen Network.
Welcome back to semifinals at the Labor Day Ultimate Championships. Johnny Bravo taking half at eight to six over double wide. In the other semifinals, Sakai took half over Revolver. Same score, eight to six. Johnny Bravo starting the half on D. Gregerson with an outside in pull. And that one lands out of bounds. Lost corn walks it to the brick. It'll be marked by Belsheim. Driscoll as his dump. Sullivan in the back of the stack, Gibson at the front. Driscoll's going deep right away from that handler position. Sullivan cuts in. Dumps to Gibson, Sullivan. Sullivan marked by Gregerson. Sullivan puts it deep to Gibson. And Lostcorn reaches out and catches it just in front of David Belsheim. Double wide converts on their first point out of half. Goes just over Ooh. Gibson's head. Lostcorn extends, grabs it just in front of Belsheim. Double wide down within one. We were talking about before the half. Bravo had a lot of momentum, could have taken it. And then what I think is a real turning point in this game, right there, Ryan Farrell spiking it on Gibbs, on Garrett, and then Garrett explodes to get a break to bring it to 8-6. Bravo still able to score and take half, but that kind of momentum shift and that kind of fire in a playmaker on a defensive line has really turned to be turned out to be a big turning point in the game. You think you're firing up your team by spiking it and showing emotion. However, Tim Garrett just got him all jacked up. Get a big D, get a break for double wide. Instead of taking half 8-4, it's 8-6. Much easier to come back from that. Garrett set the pull. Farrell on this offensive line. I'm sure we'll see them guarding each other. Double wide defense has been doing a great job of containing the dangerous deep shots of the offense. Jesse Ream, it slips right through his fingers. About to catch a 30-yard gainer. Looked like a pretty easy catch. Barron's now with the disc. Veteran on this double-wide team. Been around for more than a decade. Marked by Ream. Barron goes deep to Walsh. Walsh takes position and scores. Double-wide gets a break. They nodded at eight. Jesse Ream trying to get in front of Barons and has to go up early for the disc. Just a little bit above his reach. It's the fourth drop we've seen today. Three from Kieran Thomas, one from Ream. And just like that, out of halftime, double score, double wide scores, they get a break. And this game is now tied at eights. Parker Krug had inside position, but Walsh had a read on it, was able to go to the disc and catch it for a goal. I think Walsh is a first year player on this double wide team. Do we know much about Walsh? I don't know anything about Walsh. Mm. 
Nonetheless, he made a great play for his team to get the break. Double wide sticking with that defensive line of Garrett, Richardson, Wolf, Walsh, Anderson, Orloff, and Chris Gibson. Chris Gibson still in the game. Did take an injury sub earlier. Not injured enough to sit out the whole game though. Garrett's pull sails out of bounds. Jimmy Mickle to take it at the brick. Looks like we'll have Ackley starting out in the lane. Last time it was Ackley to Ream on the undercut. Ream with the drop. Garrett sitting out in the lanes. Poaching ever so slightly. Garrett marked on Carell. The round throw to Ream. Ream to Clark Bishop. Bishop marked by Chris Gibson. Now Pharrell with it. Pharrell marked by Garrett. Around to Jimmy Mickle. Jared Wolf. Can't get the D. Looks like there's some discussion on whether or not he's in. Mickle thinks he's in. Double wide says no. Getting Mickle caught. Mickle <laughs> talks, talks to his team. Sorry, Topher. Mickle forces it. Uncharacteristic throw for Mickle. Usually very patient with the disc. Doesn't rush himself. That time, Mickle calls foul. Wolf says, I don't think so. Here we're seeing the argument of Mickle reaching for the backhand, and he's coming into contact with probably the leg of Jared Wolf as he releases. Mickle to Pharrell. And Parker Krug gets the goal. The assist from Ryan Farrell. In the other semifinal game, Sakai is up on Revolver 10-9. And women's action, Fury takes half on Showdown 8-7. Riot who lost to traffic earlier in the year, is up 13-9. It's like they're on, that's, on. It's quite the revenge on a team that they're looking for. It's true. It's a, it's a bit of a spanking from Riot over there. They'll probably be going into finals with fresh legs. Riot just scored again, pushing their lead 14-9. Looks like they're well on their way to finals. Odds are we'll see another matchup between Riot and Fury. How many times have those teams met in the finals of a tournament? Too many to count. Too many to count. <laughs> Revolver just tied it at 10s. Here, Bravo leads 9-8. Lost Gorn to Gibson. Gibson around to Sullivan, marked by Gregerson. Had that matchup all day long. Big backhand fake. Now Thomas with it, marked by Clark Bishop. Sullivan throws the backhand to I am Driscoll. Right in front of Juzak. Driscoll outside the end zone. Tries to dump to Beershank. And Salvia with the D. Bravo looking to get a break back. Kohi to Bishop. Back to Kohi, marked by Loscorn. Over to Salvia, pancake layout. Juzak keeps it up. Juzak going deep. Looks like there was some discussion whether or not the play or the disc was up. Clark Bishop caught the goal. However, there was a bit of discussion. So the disc will go back to Juzak. Bishop still Still open by a good 20 yards. Go, 
both teams trying to figure out their position. Juzak marked by Driscoll. Over to Forshee. On the sideline now with Kohi. Kohi inside to Juzak. Salvia. Forshee bounces off his hand. He catches it and Bravo breaks. Answers double wide's break with a break of their own. Bravo takes the, or ties it. No, they take the lead at 10 8. Channing, is it enough? No. What do we want? More. They want more breaks. They lead 10-8, looking to show that they can beat teams outside of their state. They have the number two ranking for USA Ultimate. Trying to get back to those competitive days of 2006, 2007, when they had those big receivers of Cochran, Kittredge, and Taylor before those three players transferred over to Revolver. Of course, those players, two-time defending world champions, two-time USA national champions. Double wide, trying to get to finals of this tournament. Jimmy Mickle in on defense. One of those on, big Jimmy. Jimmy Mickle pulls. Goes just out the back. Now Law scoring to take it at the brick. Mickle guarding Will Driscoll at the back of the stack here. I've been excited to see this matchup all day. They battled it out on the Mario Tennis line all, all tournament long. Lost Corn going to Thomas. Belsheim has position. Thomas goes up early. No foul called. Mickle was there too. Mickle going deep right away to Juzak. And Lost Corn D's. Deep throw, turnover, deep throw, turnover. Now Sullivan to Gibson. Gibson to Sullivan, marked by Juzak. Double wide going back to some conservative play. Sullivan with the foul call. Resetting the count. Excuse me, that's contested. It'll be coming in on six. Dumps to Gibson. Sullivan with it. Rips it to Will I Am. Driscoll catches it five yards outside the end zone. Beershank. Beershank to Driscoll. Great cutting from Will Driscoll. Great cutting. Not only to get open deep, he was near the front of the stack and then just took off at the right moment. And then just outside the end zone, able to shake and bake right past Mickle. Next gen player scoring on next gen player. You know Jimmy's not gonna be happy, happy about that.
Chicago White down nine to ten. <laughs> After tying this game at eights. Defensive line of Poindexter, Orloff, Wolf, Anderson, Garrett, Walsh. Number 10, Stephen Darrow. Update from the women's bracket. Seattle Riot will be moving on to the finals. They took down traffic. Avenge their loss at ECC. Back on this game, Krug inside break to Ackley. Ackley marked by Orloff. Westbrook to Farrell. Travel called, Fahrell being marked by Tim Garrett. It's an exciting matchup. Farrell to Ackley, back to Farrell, in the middle of the field, 20 yards out. Farrell laser backhand to Clark Bishop, up the line, Farrell. Slips through his hands. Looks like there's a foul called on the throw. Daniel Poindexter going up and getting that D. Slightly undercut by Farrell. Bishop with it, marked by Wolf. Coming in on zero. Dump to Krug. Back to Ackley. Ackley to Westbrook. Westbrook gets it up the line. Over to Krug. Bravo going back. Good downfield defense from double wide. Still moving back. Finally gained some yards with Farrell. Now five yards outside. Ackley to Clark Bishop. Bravo takes the lead, 11-9. Lots of handler movement. Iso cuts in the middle. Seems to be their red zone offense. Getting a couple players to hang in the back of the end zone, allowing the middle of the field a lot of space for that cutter to cut. Ackley gets it right outside the end zone and finds Clark Bishop. Fortunate for Johnny Bravo as there was a foul on that throw. It went through Ryan Farrell's hands and Daniel Poindexter looked like it was gonna be a D. However, foul called. Bravo maintains possession and takes the lead 11-9. That would have uh, been a big, br big break opportunity for double wide to tie the game up, make it even again. Still an impressive goal line stand as they push double wide or they push Bravo back a good 20 yards. But Bravo, ever patient, gets themselves back in the end zone. Juzak with the pull for Bravo. Lower Blady pull. Lost corn up the field to Gibson. Driscoll out in the lane. 20 yard gainer in the center. Driscoll with the inside flick to Kevin Richardson. Kevin Richardson gets a hand on it. Could have been some sort of foul. Players want him to call. Looks like there was definitely contact. That is gonna be a foul. Kevin Richardson is going to tap it in and bring it to the front of the line. A foul in the end zone. The disc turns live and comes to the front of the end zone. Different than if it were a strip call in the end zone, which uncontested would result in a goal. Richardson just outside the end zone. To Gibson. Gibson lefty to Richardson. Richardson gets his goal. Double wide, only trails by one. That deep throw coming from Will Driscoll, an inside out flick. You can 
can see Clark Bishop clearly hits Richardson's arm. And Gibson nonchalant backhand lefty to Richardson. Little bump there from Kohi, not a problem. And double wide trails by one. Double wide, trying to get themselves back in this game. D-line of Chris Gibson, Tim Garrett, Jared Wolf, Scott Behrens, Jake Anderson, Stephen Walsh, and Rory Orloff. O-line right. for Bravo is Clore, Ackley, Westbrook, Burrell, Mikkel, Ream, and Krug. Bravo been mixing up their offense. A little bit of horizontal, a little side stack, a little vertical. Here Pharrell takes it down. Looks like they're coming down in a horizontal with Ackley in the middle. Mickle gets it on the sideline. Mickle puts a low flick right to Jesse Ream. Easy point for Bravo. Pushes their lead back to two, however, there is a travel called on that throw. Unfortunate travel call, Bravo getting back to their huck game. Jesse Ream still has space when the disc gets tapped back in. Ackley to Mickle, Mickle with it, not quite to midfield. Tim Garrett, nearly another D on Ryan Farrell. Pharrell to Westbrook, keeping it in the middle of the field with Krug. Foul from Stephen Walsh. Walsh, excuse me. No contest, coming in on zero. Just past midfield. Krug to Ream. Ream to Pharrell. And that just sails just past Jesse Ream. Pharrell looking for Ream. Those other games going on. Sockeye leads 11-10 on Revolver and Fury leads 11-9 on Showdown. Garrett over to Steven Walsh. Marked by Krug. Dumped to Garrett, pit call downfield. Garrett and Pharrell been battling all game long. And Garrett rips a backhand to Jake Anderson. Jimmy Mickles there. Jake Anderson makes the play. Dis sails out. Got to be some sort of call. Well, we saw earlier today, Mickle making a catch deep and Anderson coming on to his legs. Mickle just unable to get out of the way after Anderson catches it. A big collision. It's going to stay with Anderson just outside the goal line. No contest for Mickle. The white seems to be in a good position with all of the white jerseys in front of the red. Still don't have anyone in the end zone. We'll burn a couple seconds off this stall. Anderson to Orloff, double wide, gets a much needed break. Big turning point on that travel call. Jimmy Mickle rifles a flick to Jesse Ream. However, travel called on that huck. It comes back instead of 12-10, it's 11-11. Double wide gets a break. Getting a little momentum back. Showdown just scored for against Fury. Yeah. 
Sakai broke revolver and is up 12-10 and has the disc, looking for a chance to push their lead to three. Be surprising to not see revolver in the finals as they've won this tournament the last two years. Pull from Garrett. Terrell brings it down to Ackley. High release to Reem. Reem back to Ackley. Ackley putting it up. Disc is floating. Jimmy Mickles there. Quite the impressive throw there from Josh Ackley. That one looks like it's going to be sailing out the back but just seems to sit right on the end line for Jimmy Mickle to clean it up. Player we haven't really seen much in this game is Mike Nattenberg. Don't know if he's just not playing, if he's injured, or what's going on. I haven't called his name once. He played the whole Rhino game. Seem to be there every other on offense. He must be injured, still has his cleats on. Certainly wouldn't be resting him for the finals. Showdown just scored again on Fury. That could have been a break. It could be 11-11. I can't confirm that. Showdown definitely looks excited, though. Sullivan on the sideline. Vertical stack from double wide gets it up to Kieran Thomas. And Clark Bishop calling injury on the bid on Thomas. He's going to walk off the field. Josh Ackley coming in for him. Interesting. Sky Magazine had an article on the Ultimate Dream Team. Josh Ackley was on that all defensive team. That's a defensive starter, however, for Bravo. He plays offense. This time he's coming in on D. Loscorn lasers it down the line, finds Karen Thomas. Scores on Ackley. Ackley Defensive is there. Sub. Game's tied at 12. Game to 15. Looks like Revolver was able to convert that previous point. That would make the score 12 11 Sockeye. Double wide defense led by former Sockeye player Tim Garrett. He shares a line with Chris Gibson, Andrew Walsh, Jared Wolf, Jacob Anderson, Orloff. And there we go, Jackson. There's Nathan Berg in for you. Oh, excuse go. me, that's Kevin Richardson. with it now over to Krug Krug to Westbrook marked by Anderson Krug or Westbrook going deep now 
Double wide with a chance to take the lead. First time they would have had the lead all game long. Garrett picks up. Guess who he's marked by? Ryan, Ryan Farrell. <laughs> Veteran move. Timeout called from Garrett. We are also going to take a timeout, see if Double Wide can convert this break opportunity. Please stick with us here on NGN. Here at the Labor Day Ultimate Championship, we are watching the semifinal of Double Wide versus Bravo. Of course, this broadcast and all the broadcasts on the Next Gen Network are made possible by our sponsor, Elemental Technology. Elemental Technology helping us bring the game of Ultimate to your homes. We will do all the work and come to all the tournaments so you don't have to. You can sit back, have a cold one, and enjoy the game. Garrett marked by Pharrell, double wide in a horizontal stack. Richardson and Anderson, two big receivers out in the lane. Ream and Nickel guarding those two. Garrett to Richardson, marked by Nickel. Anderson on the in cut. Back to Richardson, around to Garrett. Swings it over to Chris Richard or Chris Gibson. Richardson to Gibson. Parker Krug with a big layout D. Gonna have to take an injury. A little late on the decision to go to Orloff. He was open a second earlier. Kind of peeled that cut. Started trailing away from the disc. Allowed Krug to close that lane. Krug a big offensive handler for Bravo. Played his college days in the at Colorado. Won a national championship in 2004. With Ackley, now there's Mickle up the line to Ackley. Marked by Jared Wolf. Over to Ream. Ream with the low backhand to Mickle. Mickle inside break to Pharrell. Pharrell to Ackley. Ackley high release backhand to Jesse Ream. Bravo converts their O point. Double wide, still some work left to do. They had the disc, had an opportunity to get a break there. But Parker Krug, big O line handler. Able to lay out. He is injured on that play. Didn't look like he was too banged up. Probably be seeing him later in the game. Yeah, but a huge D by Parker Krug to keep the lead for Bravo. Late in this game, you just want to have that cushion. Takes a little bit of pressure on their D line. Of course, Bravo will need to break to win this game if they don't want it to go to universe. But still, their offensive line punching it in, making it 13-12. Now double wide offense, working upfield, upwind with Gibson, Sullivan, Loscorn, Thomas, I believe that's Barons, Richardson, and Driscoll. Over in the other game, Revolver just tied it at 13s. Means that Sockeye converted an O point, but Revolver also converted their O point and got a break. Now Sockeye will be receiving the pull from Revolver. Oscorn picks up, centers to Gibson, Gibson to Sullivan, getting a lot of touches from those two all game long. Gregerson stumbles backwards to Richardson, 
Richardson to Driscoll, marked by Juzak. Driscoll calls foul. No contest from Juzak. Two highly spirited players. Me and on zero. Double wide, resembling a vertical stack. Defensive look from Bravo. They seem to be throwing a force middle. We'll see if they continue. Nope. Hey, Belsheim is there. Greatest Will Driscoll. That just happened. It did. There's going to be a lot of talk. Let's see if we can see what happens from our camera. See if he jumps from inbounds. He jumped. His jump brought the line up with him. Which they're talking about Jared Wolf. Yeah, the fact that he brought up the line, they're going to say that he jumped from out of bounds. Still an impressive play to go up between two Bravo defenders and get the disc back to Will Driscoll. I don't know. I think if he brings the line up with him, that means he jumped from inbounds because the well, line he would have to be on top of his toe. Which, oh, but which that would, would mean, mean he stepped and was stepped unless he on drug the line. his toe across it's the line. It's still if he brings it up with him on the jump. I don't really know how the players could decide what happens. As is in frisbee, just look like looks like it's going to go back to Sullivan. Really, not a definite way to make a ruling on that play. Still, a very impressive play. Very impressive. Will Driscoll finds himself in the right place at the right time. Jared Wolf making a play on that. Not only is it impressive that he went up and grabbed it between two Bravo players, but to throw it back inbounds, giving Driscoll a chance to make that play. Yeah. That doesn't happen. Really then. heads up. That doesn't happen then. Double White's matter. looking at a turn, and Bravo has the opportunity to take the lead 14 12. Mm -hmm. Instead, Double Wide maintains. So hard cap. We just got a confirmation that hard cap went on. Double wide having to score this point. Jared Wolf with it. Marked by Belsheim. Wolf to Thomas. Catches it. Past the diving Clark Bishop. Thomas throws up line to Cole Sullivan. Looks like we're gonna see Universe here. It's our second Universe point game of the day. Bringing you some great ultimate here on the Next Gen Network. Second time in a row that Double Wide has been at a 13-13 Universe. Earlier in the day, Rhino beat them. If you were watching that game, you would have seen one of the best plays I've ever seen in my life from Dylan Freechild. Universe line for Johnny Bravo. We have Josh Ackley, Jesse Ream, Ryan Farrell, Owen Westbrook, James Mickle, Jackson Kluwer, and Parker Krug. Parker Krug back on the field. His injury was not bothering him too much. The line for double wide, we have Will Driscoll, Rory Orloff. Tim, Tim Garrett. That's Tim Garrett? Mm -hmm. Chris Gibson, Jake Anderson, Kevin Richardson, and Steve Walsh. Interesting to not see Kurt Gibson, one of the most dangerous players. I wouldn't be surprised if double wide gets this disc. See an injury called. Gibson gets inserted in. Pharrell to take down the pull. Centers to Ackley. Jimmy Mickle guarded by Will Driscoll. Travel called? Something called. Both players sharing that next-gen teal earring. 
Nickel dumps to Krug. Krug across to Ackley. Ackley to Ream. Mickle in the lane. Gets the disc. Mickle throws the back end to Jackson Clore. And Bravo takes the game. Wait. Should Bravo at 14 13. It, it looks like Double Wide is walking back to the line. We were mistaken. We're waiting for a confirmation on whether or not the cap went off. All right, so players have made the decision that is a game, it is a game to 15. Soft cap went off at 13, add two. It would be is. hard at 15. So, Bravo will need to break to win or face another universe point. Jake Juzak with the pull. Fielded by Lascorn. Driscoll in the lane. And overthrows Kieran Thomas. Tim Morrissey with it now. Austin Gregerson putting it to Clark Bishop. Kieran Thomas, a huge D, game saving D. Looks like there's a foul called. Gregerson calling foul on Cole Sullivan. Still a huge D from Kieran Thomas. Saved the game for double wide. If he doesn't D that, Clark Bishop probably comes down with that. The game is over, 15-13 Bravo. However, it was uncontested coming in at zero. Gregerson dumps. Back to Gregerson. Gregerson to Morrissey. And a hand block from Kevin Richardson. Then up the line to Kurt Gibson. I think we're at universe now. We've got to be. Great defense from K. Rich. He's got some length on those arms. Hard for the smaller Morrissey to throw around that big mark. That block was clean. Strong defense from Cole Sullivan on that dump. Not allowing Gregerson to cut up line. Very physical play. However, no fouls called. Morrissey looking to dump, and K-Rich sticks his hand out there. It's a big D. Much needed. Two huge Ds for double wide. One coming from Kieran Thomas, the other from K-Rich. Now let's see Tied if they can 14s. do it on their defensive line. Double wide. Has to break to win. Tim Garrett set to pull. This has been happening all game. Pharrell takes down the pull. Can't center to Ackley. Finds Krug. Krug around to Westbrook. Westbrook to Ream. Ream with the blade flick to Jimmy Mickle. Catches it in front of Driscoll. And Johnny Bravo takes a victory. 
Who scored? I believe he. I'm not sure. Maybe he flipped it to Jackson Coor. Pharrell. Look at it on this replay. Just outside the end zone. Yep, Jackson Kluwer, Mama Bird teammates, and that's the celebration you would expect on a universal win. Oh yeah, Jimmy's fired up. Johnny Bravo proving themselves here at the tournament, making it to finals. And what a game it has been with double wide. They hold seed for the US, USA Ultimate Rankings, the number two seed. They're guaranteed second place finish here at the Labor Day Club Championships. I'm sure. Other game, we have Revolver taking on Sockeye. Don't exactly know what the score is over there. Rumor has it it's on Universe. So regional matchup, they're gonna have a fun time at the regional finals. We've had a fun time here for our semifinals. Of course, we've done it with the help of our videographers, Aki O'Dara and Brian Bedord. Director, Vin Bowie, and replay operator, Kimber Coles. All done, all put together with the help of executive producer, Kevin Minderhout. And of course, Jackson Kelsey. And Topher Davis. Be sure to come through this. Oh yeah. Uh, come back to join us for the finals. Johnny Bravo will take on, it looks like Sakai has just won. So Johnny Bravo and Sakai, a game we've already seen. It's going to be exciting. Stay tuned on the Next Gen Network. 